It's not going to warm up just yet, and according to the Madison County Sheriff's Office, the vast majority of the calls they've received in the single-digit weather is in regards to the welfare of animals. Because of this, WBON-TV followed up with Nick Worley of W&W Veterinarian Services to get cold weather expert information on not just livestock and horses, but also your cats and dogs as well. At King Brothers Used Cars in Winchester, they'll treat you like family. Come in and drive away in a new-to-you vehicle courtesy of King Brothers. Or visit kingbrotherscars.com to see their inventory. King Brothers Used Cars, family-owned and time-tested since 1966. In general, especially for livestock, you, you want to make sure that you're going to increase. As it gets colder, it gets below 20 degrees, you need to increase the amount you feed by probably 50% or more as it gets colder. You know, however much hay you're feeding, you probably have to feed that much more hay or grain or whatever. You're just going to have to feed more. The other thing is they're eating more. You need to make sure that they're drinking as much, too. And that could be the most challenging thing uh, in this cold weather is trying to get ice broken up in the ponds or trying to open up an area where they could get to a stream or something to make sure that you're, you're, they got access to water as much as they want. Because uh, it'll surprise you how much more water they consume as it gets colder. Cattle are fermenters, so as they eat, especially the more fiber they have in their diet, is the byproduct of the fermentation is heat. And so as long as they got something to chew on, they're, they produce heat, you know, they do pretty well. And their coats are actually really insulated too. Sometimes early in the morning you'll notice they got frost on their backs, and this shows you how well, because their cow's temperature is about 100, 101 degrees, and that shows you how well insulated their coats are if they're able to frost on the top and they're 100 degrees inside, they must have a really good insulation between there. As far as horses go, pretty much the same as cattle. You need to make sure you feed them a little extra, make sure they have access to water. Horses are kind of unique in that they like, when the water gets cold and starts freezing, they'll quit drinking as much, and they are more susceptible to uh, colic or having impactions and stuff um, where they get dehydrated so quickly, they'll, they'll get blocked up. And that's, it's not uncommon for us to get lots of colic calls from horses this time of year. Worley said that his business also receives calls about cats and dogs left in the cold, and he gave us some tips on how to care for these domesticated pets, too. Ideally, you really need to bring the cats and dogs inside. For the most part, unless it's a Husky or Great Pyrenees or one of these cold weather breeds, uh, it's hard for them to, to handle themselves in real cold. I mean, you obviously, you let them out to use the bathroom and stuff, but especially at night, you probably want to bring them in the garage or the laundry room if they're an outside dog, primarily. A lot of people have barn cats and stuff. Um, we get a lot of questions about that every year. As far as barn cats go, the best thing I've ever seen is if you take a uh, like an insula one of those styrofoam coolers and you could cut a little door in it for cats and throw a blanket in there. Cats actually do, outdoor cats do really well in the cold in there and it's insulated enough that their body heat kind of traps it in there. And that's a that's an easy little trick to do if you got barn cats. Dogs, people, if you have an insulated dog house, I think it's that would be definitely acceptable. They need to have some form of shelter to get out of the wind um, and be able to let their body heat kind of warm the area. The best thing to do is just bring them in the garage or a laundry room or something. They won't make too big of a mess, hopefully. Stay tuned as WBON TV will follow up this story with more information on animal cruelty in the cold from the policing and legal side of things. For WBON TV, I'm Marissa Hempel.